Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We're going over the schedule of Star Citizen's content this week, but there's also a new hotfix patch that's about to go live. Persistent entity streaming is a big focus this week. Cloud Imperium are starting to talk more about Alpha 3.18, but especially when it might start testing with the community, at least the Evocati does look a bit delayed. We also have a quick dev response on VR integration. So let's start with this week in Star Citizen. Later Tuesday, the 16 ships and vehicles that are moving into the ship showdown into phase two will be revealed and that phase two starts properly on Wednesday, which is when you can start voting on your favorites. Kyle and Pyram are also aiming to deploy a hotfix to the live servers for Alpha 3.17.2 later this week. They say, thanks to everyone that's been hammering away on the patch on the PTU, we couldn't do it without you. The hotfix aims to address various bugs, database issues, elevated problems, and more with Alpha 3.17.2, and includes a character reset, which doesn't affect Alpha UEC or your ships, but will affect any ore you've got processing, consumables uh, might go missing, and your spawn location and your character will need to be recreated, but you're not losing uh, any of that sort of important information with money and ships and reputation and that sort of jazz. Hopefully this will sort out elevators. Hopefully this will sort out a load of accessibility problems to the game. Cloud Imperium did also say that they want to run the Siege of Orison event again roughly mid-September, and we will be seeing Xenothreat run in the future too. Interestingly, Clown and Pam also have started talking more readily about Alpha 3.18. So obviously we've seen a few little bits in Inside Star Citizens and stuff, but they haven't said when it's going to start testing. We, we keep on expecting it to sort of turn up and they've been radio silent. Now, Clown and Pam have said, We know that many of you have been inquiring about the status of Alpha 3.18. We have a couple of crucial meetings planned this week for our development leadership to review the targeted 3.18 timeline. Once that has concluded, we'll be able to provide you all with a more substantial update. I can say this plan is targeting to have a 3.18 build with persistent entity streaming in players' hands by late September. So that would be more specifically the Eva Carti rollout, but more information to come soon. That's a really good point as well, actually, because all they need to do to get into players' hands for testing at the earlier stage is persistent entity streaming. That's the main part of that patch that's going to cause problems. So that's literally saving locational um, data for objects and having them be able to be saved by the server and then the servers be able to if they crash or whatever they have to bring that data back up so yeah maybe if you crash in the middle of space you're there with your ship again even if it's a server crash but there's a huge amount of problems that are going to be caused by adding this technology it's essential it's it's super important for getting like server meshing and actually the game being an mmo uh, in the future it will allow you to like build bases it will allow you to drop off a weapon on a planet and hide, hide it under a rock and then come back to get it later obviously base building isn't coming with 3.18 as far as i'm aware anyway although maybe you could stack a load of ships up to make some sort of ship fort but one of the issues here is that Cloud and Pyram expect the testing cycle to be between two to three months long. I'm expecting it to be the longer portion of that, which would then lead into uh, the expectation that Alpha 3.18 is probably going to be the last major patch we get this year and will delay some of the other plans that they had until next year. Only time will tell, but that's my expectation there. What's yours? What, what do you think? Tell me in the comments below. So what's happening through the rest of this week then? So Wednesday, we've got a roadmap update from Star Citizen that she'll give us some uh, interesting stuff that they're working on in Q3 uh, and we'll be working on in Q4. Ship Showdown Phase 2 also begins on Wednesday with the tournament bracket starting. Um, be sure to come back every day to then vote on your favourite ships that are vying off against each other. Thursday, there's another episode of Inside Star Citizen. This week, they're going to have an update on the status of persistent entity streaming, the next milestone tech for the Persistent Universe. Clan and Pyramid also said that there was going to be a sprint report um, for this Inside Star Citizen, but that appears to have been a moved to next week, probably, maybe, at least most likely. Um, it's just going to be about Persistent Entity streaming this week. I also saw a post from Clan and Pyramid Zylo talking about what to expect from that Persistent Entity streaming segment this week. He said, 
it's quite informational and I expect those eager to learn about how persistent entity streaming PEZ is coming along to find it insightful. It's worth noting though that technology such as PEZ does not have a lot of visuals to support it, so it can be a challenge to make a compelling segment for those who are more interested in tangibly visible things. Star Citizen live returns on Friday as well, um, starting at 6pm UTC on the Star Citizen Twitch. The narrative team will be answering questions from the community and there is a spectrum thread to leave your questions or upvote ones that you like which i will link in the description and comments below jump down will also be running on the 3.17 point live servers from friday at 10 p.m utc until monday at 10 p.m utc so get involved with that hopefully that hot fix patch should have improved a lot of the problems and bugs i think we can expect the monthly reports for star citizen specific universe and squadron 42 next week maybe a post about what to expect in September. September as well. We've got some good dev responses today too. So there was a Reddit thread with a question asking about VR implementation and if Clan Imperium could whitelist Warpix, which would allow you to basically use a bodged version of VR now on some headsets, which I have used in the past um, on the um, Oculus DK2 to actually get some VR Star Citizen on the go. And that was that was some time ago. Uh, Sylvan CIG responded, unfortunately we don't have resources available right now to look at that and we've got all hands on um, PEZ, Persistent Entity Streaming. Once we have Vulcan, I will add a bare bone VR implementation as soon as possible. Now, that's exciting for me, though I would expect Vulcan um, to be sort of like in a functional state so that they could actually build something like that maybe sometime next year. Clan Imperium have basically also said, or at least a dev from Clan Imperium has said, look, I'll be working on VR integration in my spare time to try and get it in the game if possible. That's sort of what I want to do. It might not be the most um, sort of best uh, experience, but it will be something uh, that we can then uh, play with. There was a thread as well, Jump Town never started, uh, saying that Jump Town didn't appear to be running last weekend properly on some servers, even though it was supposed to be. Uh, Zylo did reply, it does appear that a variety of instances did not properly spawn the mission. It wasn't all but a decent chunk. The team has already identified what they believe to be the issue related to restarting of the event too quickly after it concludes and is working to prevent this from being an issue for future events. I apologize for any frustration this may have caused you and appreciate it being flagged up. Boom. That's it for today. I really hope that Cloud Imperium put a little, just a little dab of VR in the game soon, once they've got Vulcan integration in, then let the community mess around with it. I do not want a ton of dev time to go into VR at this stage because they'll have to redo it properly if they want to have it properly in the game. Um, but it does sound like it is just going to be a dev doing it in their spare time, getting some sort of integration there. I expect it to be something that they maybe push for Squadron 42 first in the future because that being a single player game probably makes it a lot easier um, to, to have that VR integration um, and they sort of know what you're going to be seeing and what to expect. Whereas um, in the Persistent Universe, it might be a bit more complex. Are you going to be asking the narrative team some questions for Star Citizen Live? Who are you going to be voting for in the ship showdown? I'm assuming that your ship or vehicle has made it to the top 16. Um, we know that the, the Raven and the Grey Cat aren't eligible for phase two, just so you know. Are you excited about Alpha 3.18 dev information? And like me, do you expect it now to be that 3.18 is going to be the last major patch that we get this year and it's probably going to be coming into our hands sort of December time, at least to a live build. Whatever your thoughts though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. You're on a plane. It's about to crash. Maybe you're in a jungle and a vicious predator attacks. There's a nuclear war and you're caught short on the toilet. You're drowning in shark infested waters. How did you get here? What do all these scenarios have in common? That's right. Easily preventable with the use of NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. It's like the ultimate survival toolkit, but to aid in internet security and accessibility. Now I can watch my favourite Netflix and anime shows from a different country while I'm lost in the rainforest just before a tiger eats me. Thanks NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. You can get discounts by using the links below. But please note that probably in the case of a plane crash or, you know, you're drowning, NordVPN might not be the most effective solution. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway. This month we're giving away an RSI Scorpius Heavy Fighter. This two-seater powerful heavy fighter allows you to pretend you're in Star Wars with your X-Wing. It comes with a lifetime insurance and access to Star Citizen. So even if you haven't got a Star Citizen account already, you can play the game. To be in for a chance of winning that, just comment on any of my videos made during August. 
a massive thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel or just watches my content or comments and likes and shares those videos. It really genuinely does help. And if you want to go the extra mile to help support the channel, you can click on the join button under any of my videos or click on the links to Patreon. It all goes a huge way to help the channel grow and expand. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great time in Alpha 3.17.2 and I hope to see you in the verse.